Okay, <clears throat> hello everyone. Today we want to start with a new series because I have been asked several times uh, about it, um, in which I will explain how to install and use GN4, which is a very uh, famous and important program um, in high energy physics, for example. So before I will explain how to install it, uh, I want to briefly explain what it is. And in order to do that, just let's have a look at um, what P Wikipedia says about um, GN4. So I have here the German version, but I will just quickly translate it. Um, it's it's basically a platform, or you can say a framework, um, that can be used for simulate uh, particles interacting with matter by using Monte Carlo methods. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, it's it's developed at CERN. Um, it's basically based on modern C++ or at least object oriented C++. Um, and it's commonly used in, as I said, high energy physics, um, in also experiments um, regarding nuclear reactions. In medical physics, it's commonly used, for example, if you want to calculate the radiation dose that the patients get when, it, when he's irradiated with protons or ions or something like that. Then in uh, accelerator physics, you can use it, of course, quite frequently and in even in astrophysics, uh, there are applications for that. So it's a quite broad field for that. And um, I don't want to spend so much time on really uh, um, going into the details of the different possibilities that you have to, which you can do with that. So I want to directly dive into um, the topic by installing GN4. And for that, uh, we just open the website, gn4.web.cern.ch and uh, click on download. And then we have different possibilities of what we can download. And I always recommend the easiest possibility if you use a Linux-based system, like in my case, it's um, it's Linux Mint, but of course it's Ubuntu-based and then therefore Debian-based. In this case, it's very simple to install it. Also in other uh, Linux distributions, like for example, uh, Fedora or um, CentOS, uh, and so on. This this works in principle as far as I know uh, very well. But now let's uh, stick to Linux Mint or Ubuntu because I think this is still the easiest way how to do it. The newest version is uh, 10.7 and this we will download here when we click on the download button. It will take a few seconds to download of course depending on your um, uh, internet speed. And then the first thing which we will do, we uh, un un unpack that package and uh, then start um, to look at what we have to do further. For that, I created a, <clears throat> a software, uh, sorry, a folder called software. And um, in that, I want to create another subfolder called GN4. Uh, so I will do now um, a local installation of the software, uh, which I think is better than having uh, something um, uh, in in our um, yeah in, in in some other folder which uh, which you can only access with um, uh, administrator privilege or something like that. So let's um, create a new folder inside which is called GN4, and now we will untar that folder that uh, this file that we downloaded. So it's basically in the downloads folder in my case and. Um, as you can see, uh, there are already previous uh, versions downloaded, but now we will stick to the newest one, which is basically uh, uh, patch 02-tar-gs. So when we use that command, uh, then it's basically unpacked, as you see. And uh, there is a folder gn4.10.07, and we can open that. And uh, there is the source code inside. And it's a CMake project, so we can basically use CMake for compiling it. Before we compile it, you have to make sure that you have installed all the relevant uh, packages of Ubuntu in order to compile it. And for that, I created here a short list of what you need. So, <clears throat> of course, because it's a CMake project, you need CMake. And it's also good to have a GUI of CMake, which is basically CMake curses GUI. And then later the command CC make will be used for that. Then of course we need the compiler GCC and G++. And we have some further uh, programs that we need in order to compile it. Uh, especially Qt5 is important because later we also want to try some event display. And in order to do that, we need 
uh, that package in order to have a good functionality of the display. So we basically um, uh, use uh, up to install it. Uh, so I just copy paste it. And in my case, of course, uh, everything is installed already, so nothing happens. But in your case, maybe it will take a few minutes to download all the packages and run it uh, and to install it. At, yeah. But um, after doing that, uh, I will not show this, of course, now in detail. Um, we can start with the compilation and see whether everything works fine. So in order to do that, we create a folder uh, inside this GN4 folder, which we just call build, and then. We could use just CMake, but as I said, if we want the GUI, it's a little bit easier to handle. So I will use ccmake dot dot in order to take the CMake list dot txt file from the uh, folder above. And uh, as you can see, there is an error because I did not go into this build folder, of course. So um, now I have to write ccmake dot dot and then I have to press C for configure. And okay, it gives you some warning, but it doesn't matter so much. Uh, these can you can just fully ignore as long as you're not getting an error message. Everything is absolutely perfect. And now <clears throat> we can choose, or the first thing which you should always do is choosing an installation prefix, which means the folder where you want to install it. So as I said, we don't want to make any, any uh, we don't want to use any folder which uh, you can only access with uh, specific privileges. So in just we will just install it in my home folder, which is home Mustafa software. Then we will use uh, GN4. And um, then inside we had already this other folder, GN4.10.07 and so on. And there I will delete then the slash at the end and write uh, dash install. So we use almost the same folder, but a little bit different. And this will be our installation folder where we install it. So later we have a local installation. And whenever we want to uh, uninstall um, GN4, we don't have to do anything else except just deleting the folder. Uh, this is the easiest method. Then um, <clears throat> we can choose whether we want to install a multi-threaded version of GN4 or a single threaded one. If you really need a uh, a high computing power and a lot of events that you want to generate, for example, with that. Multi-threading is, of course, always the best option, but it also makes it more difficult because you always have to make sure that um, your applications that you write in GN4 are completely thread safe. And um, for the beginning, I would then recommend that we will not do that and use this off. Now, later, we can still uh, change that and make another installation of GN4 where we especially enable multi-threading. But for the time being, I would say it's better to switch it off. Okay, but what we need in any case in order to do any kind of reasonable simulation is the data. Uh, so these are some data files of specific cross sections and so on. So material, I don't know what is included there, but it's a lot. So we should enable this, of course, and uh, we should install it. Then I think the rest, uh, most of the things we can ignore. Uh, uh, of course, we can uh, use a Python integration, but I have never done it so far. Um, <clears throat> Inventor, I also didn't use until now. GDML is basically when you want to export a cut file from Katia, for example, and import it in uh, GN4, which is possible, but I also have never done it in principle. So um, what, what is important to install is the, is, um, or what, what is really important is to use Qt in order to have a, um, somehow usable and interactive event display. So I will enable this. Usually I also enable Ray Tracer X11. Uh, I think it's not so much necessary, but I'm just doing it most of the time. So it's not bad to have it. Yeah. And I think from my point of view, this is everything. You can just keep it as it is. And uh, if everything works fine uh, uh, and you installed all the packages correctly and so on, and you press then again C for configure, it should not give you an error message. And um, yeah, and uh, basically tells you that um, some of some of the Qt five folders are not, or some of these Qt five um, packages are not found. But it doesn't matter. I think it will still compile. Yeah. Uh, of course, one can also install them separately, but I think it's not necessary. So I will just press another time C for com for configuring, and now everything seems to be okay. 
Um, and then I press G for uh, generating and now it generates a make file. So in principle, uh, everything is now ready. Uh, we can just check one time this folder and it looks like that everything is inside what we need. <clears throat> and then we can just compile it with the famous command make. However, uh, if you have more than uh, one uh, possible thread that you can start, uh, you can start it in multi-threading mode. Uh, so in this case, I have basically um, the possibility to start four threads simultaneously. So I will uh, write minus J four and uh, this should work, I guess. So um, let's try our luck. What happens? Yeah, everything works fine. In the meanwhile, during the um, during the uh, compilation, it also downloaded some packages uh, which uh, are related to the uh, data that I explained before. So it can take a little bit longer depending on your internet connection. And it can also be that it crashes uh, if the downloading is too slow. Now, this I also observed in the past. Um, if the compilation is much faster than download process, um, it can, uh, can lead to some very strange uh, error messages. Uh, so it's better in this case either to make sure that you have a fast internet connection or to not um, to create too many threads simultaneously. But now I think it will work. We just have to wait a little bit. And then uh, in a few minutes, I will be back when the uh, compilation process has finished. <coughs> okay, uh, welcome back. <clears throat> now, as you see, the uh, compilation has basically finished and now we can, uh, we can install it. <coughs> So we use almost a similar command. We use make install. <clears throat> and hopefully if um, everything was done correctly, uh, it will just uh, run through it very quick. And now you can see the installation process has started. So it basically more or less copies just the binaries uh, and libraries and so on to the right path. And in order to cross check whether everything uh, worked well, we can just uh, go to the folder that we have uh, previously uh, created with our installation. And um, yeah, as you can see, there are now di different folders inside. Um, um, and the one uh, which I want to introduce now is the share folder. There are also different folders inside, uh, for example, that one. And uh, there is another folder inside. Uh, gn4 make and uh, sorry yes and there's another file inside which is called gn4 make.sh and exactly that one we want to source now uh, which means basically we want to execute that uh, more or less and uh, when you do that it automatically um, uh, sets all the right paths to the libraries and so on so now gn4 is basically when you have done that step gn4 is ready to use and okay, uh, now we can, uh, in order to test it, we go back to the, oops, to the previous folders, uh, to the previous folder that we um, created, where we basically extracted the original archive into. Um, and as you see, there is one example folders, uh, one example folder uh, in that, um, which I'm always using to test whether the installation worked fine. And there's a basic folder inside, which contains the easiest examples. And from that, the most easiest one is B1. Yeah? And if this works fine, normally you can expect that also your installation worked quite well. So it's also a CMake project. So we have to, again, maybe create a folder in that, which is called build. And uh, here we just type CMake dot dot. Um, and if, yeah, the installation worked well and the library path and everything is set well, then uh, it looks like this. And now you get an, uh, no, sorry, first you have to run it. Uh, you have to make it, of course, before you can run it. Uh, but this is normally taking only a few seconds because um, uh, it's very simple and easy code. Tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, <laughs> next time when, um, when we uh, continue with our tutorial, then I will explain how the code works, especially how the tutorial is built and how to, um, yeah, how to manipulate the code according to your own need. So now we have an executable example v1 and this we just call. And as you can see, everything worked perfectly well. Um, so we have here our event display. We have some uh, gimmicks here included in that, uh, just some text and some scale and so on. 
And uh, yeah, here you see basically um, three types of geometry that has, which have been implemented already. Uh, one is a kind of world vo volume. I think this is not shown here. Uh, one is an envelope uh, volume, as you can see here, which is a mother volume for these volumes here inside. And then you have two volumes, which are basically called shape one and shape two, uh, together with uh, uh, axis cross. So you can, uh, you can see in which uh, directions particles are going and so on. Now, so this is um, very nice. Um, in, uh, next time I will go in all the details, but now let's suppose we just um, hit this button here, which creates particle or one particle. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, in the terminal, you can find some output about this particle, what it has done, what, what particle it was, uh, the interaction and so on. But all this, as I said, I will explain later. In this case, uh, it is, predefined that it creates one gamma, one photon with an energy of 6 MeV. And also it gives you some information about the energy loss in the volume and so on. And um, yeah, this I can say already uh, that uh, neutral particles like photons are shown uh, in green color. And I think uh, negatively charged particles are shown in red, like here and positively charged particles are shown in blue color, if I'm not completely wrong. And um, the same we can do several times. So as you can see, we can create by pressing this button, uh, we can create a lot of these particles. Sometimes they hit a volume, sometimes not. What is inside the volume, we will also see later. Maybe one trick which I can show already if you type here in down in this line, run beam on and then for example, 100, then it directly creates 100 particles uh, simultaneously. Uh, or not simultaneously, but one by one, but it shows an accumulated run. So you see all particles at the same time with all the interactions with secondary particles that are created and so on. Yeah. So uh, the rest I will then show next time. If you have any specific question or you want me to show something special, just write it into the comments. Otherwise, I would be very happy if you can give some general feedback, whether you like it or whether you don't like it, whether it helps or not. If you have questions, uh, for example, installation is not working and so on, you can also write it into the comment section. Otherwise, um, if you like it, then please subscribe my channel and um, hopefully see you soon back.